Sanjita Bhattacharya is an Indian singer, songwriter and actor. She is a part of the album called Shuruwat by Berkeley Indian Ensemble which has been nominated for 2023 Grammy Awards. She has also been awarded the Emerging Artist Award from Spotify for her music single Everything is Fine. As an actor she has been part of OTT shows in Netflix and Z5. In September 2023 she will make her debut in the theaters with the Shah Rukh Khan starer Jawan. Namaste welcome to Chaibrary we are now today talking with artist Sanjita Bhattacharya Sanjita welcome to our show thank you it's we are very excited to have you here so a lot of exciting things are happening in your life right now so you're having your music is has a grammy nomination you are in a netflix show you are debuting in a theatrical release you have done modeling you have done brand endorsement you have been on wikipedia page it's like <laughs> really exciting achievements for somebody uh, so young so tell me how did all this start give us an idea about you know the inspirations influences that you had when you were growing up and how it came about how this all this started i think it all began when i was around 4 or 5 years of age i come from a family of artists my dad is a painter my mom is a homemaker and i have two elder brothers who are also artists now it was i know you are bengali so you would know that yes. Bengalis have a tendency to kind of send their kids to either any kind of art uh, classes all so kinds I, of classes. all kinds <laughs> yes so invariably i was also sent to um, learn hindustani classical music and kathak i learned under pandit birju maharaj ji kathak and then i learned from sunanda sharma ji classical music now this continued for around 10 years i trained in both music and dance simultaneously when i was in school i used to go for all these inter school uh, zonal national competitions i've always been in music into music from like nursery <laughs> when Where did I, you grow up i grew up in delhi delhi yeah grew up in delhi now nursery se hi shuru ho gaya you know music choirs bands and everything and uh, i was going for all these competitions all my teachers knew that i'm going to do something in the arts when i grow up hmm. so the fact that i was not very good at math didn't sit well with my mother <laughs> and uh, that's also very bengali <laughs> very bengali shop ki jo the bhalo hota hai you have to be good at everything all around huh? yes <laughs> yeah i was not very good at uh, math but very good at like other like languages etc which doesn't matter to <laughs> to norms <laughs> yeah so then eventually when you know marks ka time aaya mom would be like mm, all good all good <gasps> math what happened and then the teacher would say don't worry mrs mm-hmm. bhattacharya she's going to something. yeah she's going to be she's going to be doing something in the arts eventually don't you worry and that's exactly what happened mm-hmm. i graduated from school i went to berkeley college of music mm-hmm. to study music when i was there i had the incredible opportunity to sing alongside mr a r rahman and we did a huge amazing concert called Berkeley Indian Ensemble meets A R Rahman. That's the one that the album has been nominated for Grammy. Eventually, Eventually yes, later. we we okay. are the ones. Uh, I mean, it was the same team of like uh-huh. it was the same group of people. Right. But uh, yeah, the Berkeley Indian Ensemble eventually went on to be nominated for the Grammy Awards 2023 for our album called Shuruat, and that was the beginning of the ensemble. And because of that. concert berkeley started giving away scholarships to indian students hmm. to come to um, berkeley called the ar rahman scholarship that was the initiation was the initiation of that okay, yes so you have been a part of that yes and it was amazing it went viral in the country so when i huh. came back to india after college people used to recognize me on the metro or even when i'm going on a trek or something how did that feel really really How surreal you, <laughs> you were like early 20s or uh, early 20s yeah, yeah, yeah i was 22 hmm. uh, 21 22 when i came back and uh, you know people used to go like you that person I'm like yes <laughs> <laughs> so then they would be like yeah the berkeley i was like yeah so then uh, it was super fun we uh, dedicated so much time we mm. put so much effort we became a family mm. we rehearsed for that concert for four months on end and so all indian musicians or no it was indian music yeah the masters music but anybody and it was people from all over the world really? which is so which was the most beautiful part it's because it's been a very special opportunity too beautiful imagine like 
uh, a group of 100 people on stage in front of an audience of 5,000 singing Vande Mataram and everyone is oh, from wow. all over the world, right? And it's, it's very, very, very beautiful, very uh, hard to Yes, yes. And um, so, yeah, then I came back. I started doing my own music. I started writing my own music and I played, performed extensively um, mm. in the city, in the country, around the world. Being a part of an artistic family, how was that? Was it an influence? Was it a hindrance? Was it, uh, oh. uh, what was it like growing up with an artist father and creatively bent uh, family? So in the middle of being a Bengali family also, <laughs> where you, you have to be good at everything. Yes. So what did it do to you to shape you yourself? As a, did you get enough freedom to express what you wanted to do? Absolutely. Okay. 100%. I was fully encouraged to go for these classes, uh, do performances, not just by my parents and my family, but also by my teachers, which was mm. amazing, and mm. my friends. There was so much positive reinforcement all around me and mm. encouragement. Um, of course, there was this part of, as when you're in school, you have to kind of do well in right. your subjects. Mm. But a part of my parents also knew that she won't possibly become a doctor mm. or something like that. I would be a very bad doctor <laughs> if I did become one. <laughs> but. Uh, yeah, no, uh, absolutely not a hindrance. The world would have lost a, a musician, so <laughs> oh. yes, of course. <laughs> but yeah, not a hindrance at all. And I'm lucky. I'm so, so blessed to be born into a family that understands and encourages mm. the arts. Right. And uh, my father being a painter, being my first inspiration for music, you mm. know, he, he sings as well. Mm. And he's a photographer and a poet. And I was surrounded by this atmosphere at home. So that was a motivation for me to also practice and make sure that I put my heart and soul so into it. the art that I'm trying to, you know, just uh, yeah, make, justify uh, it. Justice to it, yeah. And how was the Berkeley experience? Because you had a, such a deep grounding in Indian classical music and dance. Yes. And then when you chose to take music and you go there, you must have been exposed to world music, different kinds of music. So how, uh, how do you carry that uh, training forward? What does it do to you? Like, does it give you a different perspective or does it give you a base, a good foundation? How does it help you? I mean, if at all, it does. Absolutely, it does. So, Indian classical music, a lot of people, including my mom, you know, she used to say, Tumi ita koro. you do this and hmm. you will be able to do anything. Anything, yes. And at the time, I didn't fully understand what she meant. Huh. But it's true, Indian classical music is so rooted and it's so difficult hmm. for people of other countries to even wrap their head around. Right. Classical music, not just Hindustani classical, but also Carnatic. I trained in Hindustani classical, classical, but it is exceptionally intriguing, intricate and beautiful. Hmm. And um, it really helped me in a sense. Something very interesting that I found out was when I was in Spain, it was also part of the Berkeley, hmm. Uh, hmm. like the college itself, but it was a study abroad in Valencia. Okay. And we were learning uh, flamenco music. Hmm. Now, flamenco music, it was new to us. But at the same time, I found myself to be able to grasp it a little easier than uh, some others. Yeah. Who Reason, might being? Reason being, the nuances. inflections and uh. nuances uh. in flamenco are very similar to that of Indian classical music. Because flamenco music traveled from like... Folk music travels all over the world. Right. So apparently the musicians, uh, the gypsies of Rajasthan travel all the way to Europe yes. and the language changed, but nuances remained similar or same. And I heard of this on the dance, the Kathak dance and the flamenco yeah, so dance has so much footwork is yeah. very similar. Yeah. That's so interesting. Yeah. And I think I went through one of your singles, which is Pansate. Pensate. Pensate. Yes. Is that a... Flamenco music or is it Latin American? So the, yes, so Pensarte has influences of uh, flamenco, but also very, very uh, rooted in Indian classical. Mm. At the same time, like at the very end of the song, I sing a folk song of Bulgaria, a Bulgaria. Bulgarian uh, Zaidi. Zaidi, Zaidi, Zaidi. Zaidi. Yes. Wow. I done my homework. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'm so happy. <laughs> so yes. Um, those influences converge in that song hmm. and uh, it's a very special one because whenever I sing it in front of audiences, I feel like even though they might not understand the languages. Oh, but it's beautiful. But it's uh, yeah, so, somehow it, it reaches them, truly does. And that's the one song that they remember. And I'm like, that's so funny to me because right. you understand my English songs better. But this one is the one that you remember. That's what they say. Music has no, no language, language. language of the soul. Yeah, so. it's very, very, very heartwarming. So I want to now go back to your some of your music trajectory to, to just to you know um, um, discuss a little more. 
So one that I came across, maybe one of your earlier singles, I do not know, Watercolor. Yes. Uh, and I found it very interesting coming from a visual art uh, background that the whole video, the official video had full of, uh, of the graphics were so yes. interesting. It had a visual element to it. And uh, also the how you beautifully put the metaphor of watercolor mm -hmm. into how do you, you know, ease the pain mm -hmm. uh, of, <laughs> of whatever you're going through. So tell me about it. How did that come about? And uh, is your music, to an extent, everybody's music is autobiographical? Is it? Is it not? Yes. Whatever you're comfortable talking about. It is all my music. Well, most of my music are, is like a diary entry. Right. You know, yeah. it's so personal. It's like wearing my heart on my sleeve. Mm. And watercolor in particular is one of my most honest pieces of work. Uh, where every single lyric in that song is something that I actually experienced and went mm. through. Mm. It felt so. Yeah, really? very much. It very much felt so. That's, That's amazing. Piece. Thank you for saying that. So, um, yes, we recorded it in my friend Dhruv Vishwanath's house. He's also a musician. Um, he is featured on that song. And uh, we recorded it in his bedroom. No studio, no nothing. And it was actually, my vocals was just like the initial scratch recording. Hmm. But uske baad, the pandemic happened. Ah. Like within a week. Huh. So we couldn't meet each other. We couldn't go to a studio and record it properly. Right. No, nothing. So what you're hearing is that bedroom scratch recording. Really? Yes. Oh, wow. Yeah, that one day. It's, it, it, yeah. it's very, very, very special. I, it, I always go back to that for some reason. I've always yeah. gone back to that yeah. when I was going through all your um, uh, singles. Then the one that I like to ask also, it's called, I think everything is fine, mm -hmm. is, is that? Mm -hmm. And there you take up a different issue, you take up something of the environment. Mm -hmm. Tell us about that, how did that come about? Yeah, yeah, so everything's fine has a question mark after it. So it's everything's fine, like is it? Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> you know, because it wasn't when I wrote it. Uh, it stemmed out of the experience of, see so when we used to go to school in Vasant Kunj in Delhi, uh, there was there were these hillocks that mm. we used to cross on my way to school and what happened one day was my dad took me to this protest where a lot of artists were involved mm. um, and I was just accompanying my dad and we were all holding hands and we were protesting against the construction of these malls. Mm. Obviously nothing happened and the malls right. came about and then years later once the mall was built, everything was up and running, I got a gig, mm. I, got a, I had a show at one of those malls. And I played it, then I got paid for it. And when I looked at the money, I felt like, like a hypocrite. Hmm, hmm. Like, what am I doing? When I was little, I protested against the construction of this very mall. Now I'm here hmm. singing, getting paid for it. Hmm. What is life? How weird is this? Hmm. What is going on? Hmm. And so I wrote Everything's Fine about how everything's becoming a concrete jungle. jungle yeah. And uh, we are insensitive towards the environment and how nature will not forget. It will forgive, but it will not forget. And eventually, it will come back at us like twice as hard. Right. And um, Pretty hard hitting lines there are. Yeah. We have done well, but yes. we, have, we have not yeah. done well. Yeah, exactly. yeah. <laughs> beep. Okay. The beep. <laughs> yeah, because I, I mean, I did not restrain myself. No, in, it was wonderful. In, in it at all, because I was like, I was so passionately angry. Right. It, while writing that song. Um, and that did definitely, your passion came through because I think for this particular single, you won, you were uh, one of the emerging talent in Spotify. Yes, uh, for 2020. For 2020. Yes. So how did that feel? Amazing. I did not know that it would, you know, get any of that. Huh. But uh, it was the first year of Spotify doing this emerging artist program called Radar. Hmm. And I was one of the first few artists to be on it. And it was such a privilege. And I, what I was really happy about was that it was not a very commercial sounding song. Mm, it yeah. was something very personal to me. Right. Something that should reach a lot of people, in my opinion. And uh, I'm, I'm so glad that it got that platform. I'm yeah. just grateful for it. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. In fact, uh, you know, I think Billy Jewel had talked about it that singers want to uh, want to be the loud voices to the quiet hearts oh. so you know uh, so which are the quiet hearts that you want to express <laughs> through your uh, songs is what i want to know what are the things that are concerned to you that the big ones big things that you want to give a voice to of so. course one of them would be about the environment um, there are certain things that you can't express in words 
which should be told through songs because music just makes it easier to the ear. Mm. Um, when I, if I speak about it, it becomes preachy, mm. you know, or it could become a speech. Uh, people will um, maybe ban it or mm. won't allow me to speak. But if I make it into a song, if I make it into art, I mean, one of the biggest responsibilities of an artist is to, is to talk about the present, right. uh, is to be assertive and shine a light upon things which are not being spoken about. Mm. And um, if as an artist I am able to achieve even a little bit of that, there's nothing like it. So coming to with this context, the other that's also I, get, I think a single, a red, yeah. that uh, was that was an interesting one. But also I felt it's slightly autobiographical, I do not know whether it is. Mm -hmm. And I also felt that these are the songs that are helping you kind of find yourself. Was that how it is? Is that a journey that you're going through? Or tell us about that. Yes. And also along with that, I think the latest one was also very interesting. Out of tune. Out of tune. Yes. So, you know, give us an idea about these two, how they yeah. came about. Yeah, again, very autobiographical. Red was a collaboration with my friend from college, from Berkeley, um, called New Raza. She's from Madagascar. And I really wanted someone to just write a verse on it um, who felt the song with me at the same level the beat, and yeah. Neo really did, yeah. Neo killed it, she uh, wrote it. It was a really fun uh, collaboration. Isn't it? Yeah. Yes, yes. And it was in the middle of the pandemic. Yeah. It was amazing and you know, uh, I think she was in Madagascar or Boston, I'm not sure but she uh, you know, wrote this amazingly fun verse in Malagasy. Hmm. And, uh, Is that the language? Their language okay. of yeah. Madagascar and yeah, it was a great fun collaboration but at the same time it was a it came from a lot of angst for sure hmm. red i chose the name because uh like i remember the hook it says can't wait to reclaim my, my own, own red, red. Ah. now red is that like like angst the ah. power ah. so it had all of that kind right. of like simmered into it it had but it, it did had. Yeah. It, was, it was it's quite quite a nice <laughs> nice one thanks and ah. then out of tune i wanted to, it to be very different i wanted it to have an Indian element and that came from hmm. Sarangi, hmm. it's one of my favorite Indian classical instruments and uh, the Sarangi was a part of it and it came out of heartache, hmm. uh, that's all I could say but uh, out of tune is basically about being in a relationship where you are both not aligned with each not other, aligned with out each of tune. Okay, that's cool. Hmm. Yeah. So in your music there are, there are things that you get to also uh, probably endorse and uh, things that you believe in. So I, I came across this single that you had, which I can't remember the name, but which talked about an unconventional relationship, uh, which mm -hmm. is Koyasa. Koyasa. Yes. Koyasa. Yeah, yeah, yes. yeah. That was also very beautiful. So Thank you. There are, there's this question that I want to ask you. I kind of see you as a, your persona as a musician is like a like a world musician seems to be. You are fluent in so many languages. Uh, forget about all the uh, vernaculars in India, but I, I heard you speaking Spanish. I heard you singing Baul songs in Bangla. I heard you English, Hindi, everything. Um, different styles. I think you have a ballad also. You have rock. Um, influences from influences everywhere. Influences from everything. Yeah. How do you define yourself? What kind of music you musician you are? I mean, if you, if you were to. Uh, yeah, I mean, the, it's very hard to put a finger on it. All my career, from the moment it started, I've tried to fight off being boxed in. Hmm. Because initially, people used to say jazz musician. Hmm. Because I was playing at jazz, jazz clubs or jazz-oriented shows. Huh. But I would not define myself as a jazz musician because I don't write it. Hmm. What hmm. comes from within me hmm. is what I am. Right. And that is everything. Like, it's very much like you can't, like... Box it, Box it anyway. And, and that's how you would like it to be. Yes. Uh, so if that is world music, sure, let it mm. be called that. But I honestly don't have a name, name for, for it. it. And my influences are from everywhere. And all the languages that entice me, uh, be it Spanish, fr French, Portuguese, um, Hindi, Bangla, all of you. You are very talented. I must tell you this. Uh, <laughs> Thank you. Because it is not easy to pull this off. In different languages, different styles. It's, it's not that it's not I hope my mom is listening to this. <laughs> languages are important. <laughs> <laughs> it's not everybody's uh, cup of tea, really. And you sing so fluently that it seems like your first language. That's what I felt every Thank time you. I heard you in any mm -hmm. particular uh, language and in a particular style. 
so yeah so so your music career yeah. before we go to the next segment of your career uh, now is exciting too because yes. of the grammy nomination yes <laughs> and uh, all the very best for that congratulations first of all Thank that's you. like months of hard work and yes. years of waiting probably yes. that uh, got you this and this is uh, really going to take you somewhere else as a musician <laughs> Now let's come to your acting debuts and how did that come about and you had recently done an OTT Netflix show Pyar uh, feels like it feels like it Pyar <laughs> yeah Pyar of course <laughs> yeah. feels like it so yeah. how did that come about what was the experience mm-hmm. how did you get into acting suddenly from music very random very it's random very very okay. random so it was in the middle of the pandemic 2020 So I, pandemic has been very good for you. Pandemic, <laughs> I was like very beginning. <laughs> Shuru say, I know it is so morbid and so like subjective. Everyone's experience, but mine was has been just good. fantastic. It God's grace, that's great. Yes, mm-hmm. thank you. And it was amazing. So 2020 uh, October, I got a call from a casting director. They mm. wanted to cast me for a, an ad. Now I was not doing anything else. I was like, yeah, sure, I'll give it a shot. And it was I did it on a whim. I got through. So one ad happened. This is the Bizleri ad. No, this, no, this was is another ad. The first one I ever did was for Bumble. Okay. Now I did that. Then another ad came through. Then another. So I did three ads for different brands. Mm. And then so this started in October, right? By December, I got a call for Feels Like Ishq. When I saw Netflix written, I was like, okay, I'll audition for it. Sure. Mm. And I got through. And I was so surprised. And it was really funny because. The audition was <laughs> the audition was a conversation between mother and daughter. Okay. And my dad did the mother's prompts. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it was really funny. Huh. Uh, but again, like you know, it was all fun and games. Huh. And it happened. It went through. Right. And uh, so December, I, I flew to Bombay for four days. Uh, Saba Azad huh. was my co-actor, huh. and uh, I knew her also because she's a musician. We knew of each other, but it was the first time we were meeting. It was lovely working with her. Like the days just. Flew yeah. and I was such a child, such a kid on set because I would keep asking, "Ye kya hai? Wo kya hai? How does this work?" And I would keep falling asleep because I was so exhausted. <laughs> so there's a collection of pictures, pictures of like just me sleeping <laughs> on set. So you were comfortable in an actor's skin? I was surprisingly. Because it came natural. You felt it natural. It really did. Good. Kudos to the director Danish because he really let me do my own thing. He just explained the scene to me, and he was like, "Now do." Now you do. Your, yeah, do your thing. Do your thing, mm. and it really came naturally. And uh, so, what you see there is me, mm. pretty much. Pretty much. Yeah, except of course, uh, there's a certain angle of sexual orientation and everything to it. Huh. But even though that doesn't come naturally to me, that was I, I just felt it. I was just like. Very, comfortable, very, very to, comfortable, to and of course, Saba made it very comfortable very, for yeah. me as well. And, and then, what next after that? So what then, happened? Yeah. Uh, so then it continued. Uh, many more ads came through after we shot that December, and uh, it released in 2021. Hmm. Feels like it came out in July 2021, and in August I got a call for Jawan. Hmm. Now I didn't know what anything was. Huh. I was such a noob. You know, <laughs> um, I got a call from. Mukesh. You don't know, didn't know who was starring in it. Nothing. Yes, nothing. I knew absolutely okay. nothing. I was in Kolkata at the time for okay. a show. Huh. I got a call and I was like, okay, this is you know, I'm calling from Mukesh Thabraji's office, and I was like, I I didn't know who and what. Yeah, and, and, how what, and, and then then and they were like, we would like to cast for a, you know, for a film, and are you coming to Bombay anytime soon? And I was like, yeah, actually, I'm coming next week. So they were like, yeah, come to office audition. So I was like, okay. and i just knew that it was for a film that's all hmm. i did it again very much like without knowing anything so i think the best auditions are where you don't know, don't much. know anything and it's yes. not daunting mm-hmm. you know so i did it and a week or so later i got a call from there and they were like so you've been selected yeah uh, now i can tell you that the protagonist is shahrukh khan sir and i was like shahrukh khan no way <laughs> no what <laughs> are you kidding <laughs> I was I was ecstatic and I called my mom and I was like you know the this the blah 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 and I was just like going ham and uh, amazing yeah it was amazing and uh, I was like yes 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 contract whatever yes everything I yes like, everything <laughs> everything can take care of itself later I was like yes I'm in uh, let's do it and we started shooting after that so Jawan started happening meanwhile I shot for another uh, series called The Broken News on hmm. Z5 hmm. where I was playing a reporter And uh, I also shot for another film called Adbhut alongside Nawazuddin okay. Siddiqui sir. Okay. Uh-huh. 
After How was that, that experience? Amazing. Uh, what a what a performer. Mm. And again, very much. I think what I've feel very lucky about is that all these incredibly big names and you know talented actors that I have been lucky enough to surround myself with have always made me feel at ease. Mm. Never, I've never felt daunted by their presence. Mm. You know, correct. Yes, and which is an amazing uh, thing to have. You know, yeah. because. They must know that I'm a beginner, right? Yeah, yeah. But they just made me feel like, let's just do it. You know, this is we are in this That's together. That's the hallmark of a good uh, of professional a good, actor, actor, and a good person. Also, good person also. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. They just made me feel like, like we're in this together. Right. If you're having any trouble, let's just pause it and, and let's go over it together. Right. Like that, you know. Yeah. And that was so generous right. of them. Yeah. So generous with their art. So so humble as people. And there's so much to learn from that. And after that, I've been shooting for another series called Django. Okay, and a few other things that I can't name it just yet, but sure, no yeah. problem. So, how how do you deal with these events in life? Is it like do we go with the flow, or do you believe that there is this divine uh, power, which is do you believe in synchronicity, uh, something that uh, you know somebody up there is kind of devising little little things for you to <laughs> take you to the path, or uh, do you not think about it at all and just go with the flow? Go with the flow has been my mantra mantra since I was in school. Honestly, go with the flow. All my friends know go with the flow was a thing. But as I grew up, like a few years earlier, I used to do this thing manifestation. You know, hmm. I used to write what I want. Hmm. You know, eventually was acting in the cards that it time. It was because not. You already knew you were a musician. You would be a musician. Yes, yeah. but acting was actually not on the cards because I never really did theater. Huh. Never really trained in the art form. Huh. Um, but it just happened, and it. Happens so organically, yeah. and I'm enjoying it so much. I know that this is a privilege of sorts because I know there are millions of people out there who would kill for you know something. Right. And if this is being served on a platter like this, I cannot and I do not take this for granted. It yeah, is but it's amazing. Probably has not been served to you on a platter. You deserved it. There, there, you know, people get noticed for something. Yeah. Uh, if yeah. not acting, your music got noticed. Your uh, you know uh, production quality got noticed. How you Perhaps. are uh, in the, those music videos got noticed. Actually, that's right. One of my friends told me that they actually noticed me in one of the my, my music videos, and yeah. I really like to make like a whole story out of those. Yes, music you, you you produce very good uh, music videos. The uh, the visual uh, element of it is also as good as the song. And, Thank you. you. Know, that's, that's uh, there's a story to it, and it's very very relatable. Very relatable. Yeah. Thank you. So yeah, maybe maybe that. But whatever it was, I was not planning on this. Right. But it's amazing that it's happening, yes. and I am looking forward to exploring this art form to its fullest. To its fullest. So yes, an important question: Sanjita Bhattacharya, the musician, and Sanjita Bhattacharya, the actress. Who who would you choose <laughs> if you had to choose? If I had to choose, I would. Oh man, I would want to do both. <laughs> Honestly, I mean, in in no world is it impossible to do both because the industry is so tightly knit. I right. feel um, there are multiple actors who are also musicians, musicians who are also actors and dancers. Mm. There are several examples of them in the industry. So I would want to do both. Absolutely. And if you're getting so much opportunities, good, the best of the opportunities. I mean, uh, it'll only make it'll only make you grow as an act, as an artist, yes, right? Yes, I know, and it's it's very linear to box yourself into. I'm not a linear person. Hmm. I hmm. have different uh, things Interest. that I'm in hmm. different interests, different things that I'm capable of doing, and I have only one life to try it all out. Right. So if I have an inclination and even a little bit of uh, talent in any of these art forms, I want to explore it all. So, what some people say also that you know you must stick to one particular field. Otherwise, a jack of all trades and master yes, so of none. Yes. What do you have to say about that or, or to them? Uh, yeah. Well, I have to say to people who say jack of all trades and master of none, the full thing is, but still better than master of one. That's Be true. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because it again, like I would want to reiterate that you have one life to try out all of it. Right. You know, and uh, my parents uh, encouraged me to do dance, to do music. Now I have an interest towards acting, and now if an opportunity, for example, comes for dancing, I would take it up like that, heartbeat. you know, yeah. in a heartbeat. I, I would want to explore myself to my fullest, fullest potential. potential. Yeah, absolutely. You know what? Also, I think your once again, I, I don't know why I'm coming back to this, but I've also been classically trained as a dancer, so really? I what understand Bharatnatyam. Oh, so okay. I think 
you being trained in classical uh, art forms really grounds you and gives you a different kind of confidence, does it? Uh, and it kind of gives you the skill set to take on anything. I that mean, it is. It, it definitely creates a very, very uh, strong foundation. Right. right. Um, and I grew tired of my mom saying it to me again and again. You because don't understand you're, when you're a kid. You don't. You don't. And you, you don't. know, the, the amount of practice that goes into it. I remember my mom. Kids don't like it. Kids don't it's like it. It's tough for them. I am one of them too. You know, when I was a kid, my mom would sit on top of my head and she would be like, Doh ghandi practice karne hai. And I would be like, Yo, this is torture. But now I understand. Do thank her. I thank, <laughs> I do thank her. And, my, and, and it was very sweet because when I was a child, I used to sit with my Tanpura. Hmm and practice and mm -hmm. in those two hours dad used to come home from the studio and both of them used to have chai while listening to me mm -hmm. and uh, that is such a beautiful memory in my head right you know it's 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 lovely and i'm so grateful that you know they really pushed me to do something and now i am fully in it mm -hmm. uh, if not for my parents if not for the encouragement and the love that they gave me uh, i wouldn't be doing what i am doing today that's true So since we are talking about art and art forms, what does art mean to you, if I were to ask you? Art is uh, the most honest form of self-expression for mm -hmm. me. Okay. It is also a huge responsibility mm -hmm. because what you make of it mm -hmm. is for the world to hear, see and experience. Mm -hmm. um, art is honesty and uh, I guess without art, like zindagi fiki hoti, you know, fiki chai. Right. So it is just that chini in that that huh. makes it kadak. Yeah. So <laughs> that's what art is to me. The thing is, I am so lucky. Like every day, I count my blessings. Like how lucky are we to, you know, be doing something that we love. That's true. Every single day and get paid for it. Yes. You know, and sometimes I work too hard. My parents are like, "You're never home. When are you coming home? You know, you're working too hard." And I'm like, "But." It feels like play, uh, you know, all work, no play. play. It's feeling it like play like only. Play, yes. So that's amazing. Yes. It's, it feels it's seamless. It, it feels feel seamless. seamless. And I enjoy it. And of course, it's hectic. It's exhausting physically because mm. you're traveling so much. Right. Especially when you're trying to juggle two different, two different things. things. Two different aspects of yeah. your career. And also your calendar is all over the place. Locked. And, mm. and locked. But it is so much fun. And it is such a, like, I, I don't take it for granted. You know, <laughs> yes. it's, yeah. it's amazing. Right. Yeah. So, yes, we will not let you go before making you <laughs> sing first. So, maybe two songs, any of your choice. Okay. Uh, okay. <clears throat> I'll sing a song which my dad taught me. Okay. Just a few lines of yes, that. Yes, sure, okay. sure. Duya mare hai Pagol korli re Wonderful. <laughs> Takes me back to my childhood. <laughs> and uh, one more, I think you sang some uh, one A.R. A. Rahman song very beautifully. So we'd oh. love to have uh, that. Yes. Kun Saya Kun. Yes, Kun yes. Fire, kun, kun, fire, kun, fire, kun, 
जब कहीं पे कुछ नहीं भी नहीं था वही था वही था वही था वही था जब कहीं पे कुछ नहीं भी नहीं था वही था वही था वही था वही था वो जो मुझ में समाया वो जो तुझ में समाया मोला वही वही माया वो जो मुझ में समाया वो जो तुझ में समाया मोला वही वही माया कुन फाया कुन कुन फाया कुन सदा कला Wow, lovely, beautiful, beautiful, <laughs> beautiful. It's lovely, lovely. Thank Absolutely. you so much. You can go a long way. Oh. You're so so talented. <laughs> Love so to sweet. It's been a pleasure. One last question. So, what do you think about Chaibrary as a platform? I think it's a great way to learn about where the art is really stemming from, hmm. the sutra. Of, very well said of the art you know because as artists we put our art out there where our hearts on our sleeve as a painter my dad paints his works but where do they know where do people know where is it stemming from what is the inspiration what is the influence what is the work that the artist has put into it you know often as artists we are also business people we are our own business in fact even sharuk sir says that <laughs> and you are your own product and you have to unfortunately sell yourself put yourself out there it is a very daunting thing for a person to do now to know all of this baggage that an artist comes with i think it's eye opening for people who are just viewers or listeners to know where it's coming from often clients you know they bargain <laughs> they negotiate you are not paying just for that art piece or that particular performance you are paying for thousands of hours, hours of, of practice. practice you are paying for all those 2 to hours karke jo itne saal maine bitaye hain you know in in honing my art or for any artist it's true so it's very important for people to know that it's not an easy thing it doesn't just happen, happen. you yeah. hone your skill you work on it just like a mathematician just like a scientist it's a study it's a craft and to build that respect amongst masses is very important and i think chaibrary provides that platform for people to truly understand where an artist comes from and therefore i'm very very uh, honored to be here and i'm glad that you're doing this this is very very well put together and that's true chaibrary is giving us an opportunity to a peek into the artist's yeah. hard work the yeah. life behind the yes. art yes i know the person and the life behind the art True. so that's that's the great thing yes sajita it was <laughs> wonderful soulful <Thank> and <laughs> so exciting to have you here and Thank to be so able much. to i'm also feeling so lucky to, to have this opportunity to talk to you and really really enjoyed it thank you Me so too. much thank you so thank much you. thank you so this is yet another um, episode of chaibrary hope you enjoyed this episode and uh, we are so looking forward to your love and your affection please subscribe to our channel press the bell icon for getting the latest updates i am lubna sen and i'll be signing off till next time we meet please take care